welcome back to my channel. So I want to take you guys on a little tour of my yard today to kind of show you what's happening for spring. Now keep in mind all I've done so far is just clear out some of the beds. So things are going to be messy looking and I'm going to kind of give you this is my starting point reality. Um, so we're going to get started on that. I want to say thank you first to everybody who was wishing me well with Macy. Um, we're still trying some stuff. We've got some medicine from the vets, so we're praying that that'll work. But thank you for all your wishes. And now let's get started with the tour. Okay, so I'm starting right here at my back porch, and I'm, I have some big plans for this this year. I am going to have to do some painting and things first, because you can see this is where it gets the worst of the weather. So a lot of painting to do, and then I'm going to do some string lights, some curtains, lots of plants. And we're going to start right here. This is my viburnum, and this is already starting to green up. And this has grown so much since I picked it up. Now over here is where my salvia are planted, and you can see it's the three green things here. These are some of my favorite plants that I have. These will grow really tall, really fast, and they have a really pretty purple flower. They don't smell the greatest, so I wouldn't put them on like a patio where you're going to sit next to them. Truthfully, they kind of smell like, like sweat, um, but anyways, they're going to grow really tall. They'll bloom, and if you cut them back probably about mid-July where I live, they will get a second bloom. So these, and then the other things I've got planted here, some mums, and these are ones with white flowers. And then over here, I just have some cypress spurge. And this came from my great-grandmother's backyard, a little piece of it. And I put some here, and it's continued to multiply each year. So this is the little section by our sliding door. And what I did is I moved the arborvitaes down here. Now, I had these on each side of the door after, um, like, around the winter. But I'm making space on the porch for summer plants. So I just moved these down here. And those are the lights that I showed, I think last year, that I picked up at Home Depot. They're still going strong and I love them. And then right here I just kind of have a rocky area that I had nothing to do with. So I put in some sedum. And this one grows really well, this one's great. I have a smaller one up here that is just okay. You can see that right in there. And then I have some other little ones in here. And I'm pretty sure that is no longer alive. Okay, so this section is gonna need some more cleaning up. You can see a lot of messiness, but I just wanna show you what I've got going on. So this is my Russian sage, and this is a really nice plant. This one here, it will have almost a lavender type look to it pretty much the whole summer and then down in here this gets full sun pretty much all day so I've just got some sedums in here and then I've got some semper vivum over here and this is the arachnoidium kind so you can see that it's starting to get the webbing and these will survive the winter here in New York and this kind here was actually one of those ones that comes as a tile mat that I picked up at Home Depot and just cut into pieces and it's spreading really nicely. So up here in the front on either side of the front porch, I have some sweet woodruff planted. Now this is a really good one too. This one spreads really quickly. I bought probably, I think five or six flats for each of these sections. And this is about two years in. And this will get little white flowers once a year. On the other side of my walk here, I am kind of disappointed by this. This is my chocolate chip ajuga, and this spread really well from between the first and second year. And then this year, I don't know what happened, but I noticed a lot of dieback, like this whole section in here, that whole section in there. So I have to do some research and find out if it's known to die back after like two years or if something happened to it. But I mean, some of the sections are still going strong. So over here, I'm going to show you one of the biggest issues we're dealing with, and that is water runoff. We live on a hill. Our part of the yard here is flat, but this all up there is a hill that runs down, and we have been having a lot of drainage issues. So we are trying to do 
a ditch to kind of stop to break the water from coming down the hill. Now, if this works, it'll be filled with gravel and done kind of like a French drain. So it's kind of like a wait and see, and hopefully it works. Otherwise, we might have to replace the leach field. But right now, I have to be honest, I hate looking at it, but it's temporary and it could solve a bigger issue. So that aside, I have all my rows of Sharon's here. Now, none of those have greened up yet, but I'm waiting patiently because they all were really good last year. And then here we go. This is that little garden I made, and this is a mess. So last year, we got my parents' old riding lawnmower, and we named him Bradley. But my husband was learning how to do it, and he aimed it the wrong way and blew grass all into here. So I am raking things into piles to clear out all the old stuff and put remulch re it. And I did have some stuff dying off, so let's go ahead and see what is coming back this year. So I noticed my rhododendrons doing okay. I'm going to get in a little closer. There has been a lot of stuff that I can see that the deer did chew off. And I don't know if the camera's going to focus, but the tips of all these branches have been chewed down. Now over here, I've got more Russian sage because I loved it so much. And this started out as two small bushes, but it does get bigger. Now this one, I do not go ahead and trim until the season. The branches that get nothing new on them, I will trim once it starts to bloom, but I won't do it beforehand because some of the old wood does bloom. Over here, I had salvia and I did that whole cutting it back halfway through the summer and it just died off. It looks like I am going to get this section here to come back perhaps, but this one is completely dead. It just dried up and shriveled. So, I mean, something could have gone wrong with the plant, but more than likely I trimmed it at the wrong time of day or I trimmed it and it got hot and burnt or something. So I'm learning, but I will have to replace that guy. Now over here, my little, uh, I don't even know what to call it, my little birdhouse tower. I'm leaning it down for now until I can get some U-shaped stakes to hold it into the ground because it keeps blowing over and I don't want the birds making their nests to get injured. So I'm going to look for them and kind of put this back up. And I've got to do it soon because my clematis is actually growing this year. So this is going to be the first year I've got two of them here. I bought these on clearance for $5 a piece. And I have not gotten to see them bloom yet because every time they start to green up and it starts to look like something's going to happen, the deer come through and chew them to the ground. So I'm going to try and get that thing staked up so these can kind of wind their way up it. And then over here I have, I'm pretty sure it's vinca. That came from my grandmother's yard and this will spread. So if you don't have an area that you want it to overtake, don't plant that. But I like it because it's a nice ground cover. Now over here is where I have my little water feature. These were behind it last year, but a storm came, knocked them over, and you can see it broke the little screen doors. They were kind of like a backdrop. So now um, I'm going to take off the corbel and the rest of them I'm going to see. They're probably just going to end up at the dump because they're pretty badly broken. So these are the porch railings from my house when I was a kid. And then those are just some solar lights leading into here. And I've still got to go ahead and pick out some plants and replace the solar pump because that kind of wore out. I'll end up putting in Amazon Frogbit and Hornwort. And I just ordered them off of eBay. They came in little vials of water. And by the time summer was over, they had the entire surface covered in like mini lily pads. It was really pretty. Now this is the last little section of flower garden I have to show you before I take you over to my vegetable garden. And this one here is where I had my obedient plant. It started out as one plant and this is what it's spread to. Now by the end of the season, these will be a few feet high and they get like a pinkish purple flower. These are called a garden thug. So if you don't want th something that's gonna spread, don't pick these, but you can see even with the rock border, they're all coming outside of it. So this will fill in an area. This is two years later, and they started out probably a third of that. So I'm really excited for that, actually. 
And then I just have these poles here, which I will put hummingbird feeders on, and that one's just got a solar light for now. And then here we are in my little vegetable garden. Now this, um, I can't start planting probably till the middle of May where I live. They usually say after Mother's Day. But this is going to be tomatoes, cucumbers, and maybe string beans if I can find some. And I've got to do less than I did last year. Last year I fo followed the advice of a website that I found and it turned out to be way too closely planted. I put, I think, eight tomato plants in there. And they just, they never really matured because they were so overcrowded. So a little bit less plants this year, I think will give them more space and they'll do better. Then this section here is where I will bring that bench out and I'll put all the herbs. And then my raspberries are doing really good. So I have, actually haven't gotten any berries off of these in the two years I've had them. The birds came and got them first. But I think that this year they've grown so much that I might actually get some. So I don't know if it's the same for all raspberries, but I know with these you wait until the spring to trim them back because I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. They don't, it's like, it's the new versus old wood that it grows on type thing. So you want to wait and see what greens up before you go ahead and cut things down. So like these are all greened up and new. You can see that these are some old canes here that aren't going to green up, aren't going to do anything. So I'll go in and trim those out, but you can see it's even spread. To over here and I picked these guys up actually off of Facebook marketplace I think I spent like ten dollars for six of these little bushes so I'm really excited that maybe I will get something out of these this year so I want to thank you guys for coming on that little tour of my yard with me and as you can see I am gonna have a lot to keep me busy this upcoming spring and summer a lot of uh, cleanup and planting to do but I want to thank you guys for watching if you'll take a minute to like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.